You're watching Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Welcome to the first episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. In this episode, we're going to be talking about some of the basics of flash photography. Now, just because this stuff is basic doesn't mean it's not important. In fact, this stuff is so important that it could revolutionize the way you use your flash. This is good stuff. So let's begin by looking at some of the questions that were sent in. To get the best results when using a Canon 580 flash unit on a 20D, should I stick to ISO 100? Would you ever change the ISO for some reason? Can you please explain key shifting to me in regards to outdoor portraiture? Once I establish a meter reading on my subject of, say, F8, what do I have to do to lighten and darken the background? These are great questions. And the first thing we need to understand is how our camera's shutter works. On most cameras, the shutter is what's known as a curtain shutter. And it's made up of two curtains that open and close to obtain a proper exposure. And these curtains have names, the first curtain and the second curtain. And they open and close to reveal light to the sensor, much like an actual curtain in a, in a theater works to reveal what's happening on the stage. So let's dive in and take a closer look at how these two curtains work. When you press the shutter release with your finger, it tells the camera to open the shutter. The first curtain opens to reveal the light to the camera sensor. Then the second curtain follows behind to hide the light. Then the curtains reset and wait for you to press the shutter release again. Let's watch that again. Notice in this animation that the first curtain opens completely before the second curtain begins to follow. This only happens at slower shutter speeds usually speeds under 200th of a second. Now watch what happens when we speed things up. When the shutter speed is faster, the second curtain can't wait for the first curtain to open all the way. If it does, it won't make it across in time. Notice in this animation that the shutter is never fully open. It just reveals a slit of light as it travels across the sensor. As the shutter speed increases, the slit becomes smaller and the curtains move faster. Now that you know how the shutter works, we can begin to talk about a few things. The first, sync speed. Sync speed is the shutter speed on your camera that allows the first curtain to fully open before the second curtain begins to follow. In other words, it's the fastest shutter speed you can use with a flash. Let's take another look at that animation, this time with the flash in the mix. When our camera's shutter speed is set to sync speed or slower, a few things happen. When you push your shutter release button, the first curtain opens. And as soon as the first curtain is fully open, the flash fires. Then the second curtain closes. Now, if we set our shutter speed too high, we'll have problems. Let's take a look. When you press your shutter release, the first curtain will begin to open. But before it's fully open, the second curtain begins to close. When the first curtain is fully open, the flash fires just like it did before. But this time, part of the sensor is covered by the second curtain. This will cause our photo to have a black area. And the faster your shutter speed, the more black you'll have in your photo. To make sure you don't have this problem, always set your shutter speed to your camera's sync speed or slower. Sometimes sync speed is called X-Sync. X-Sync and sync speed are the same thing. You can find out what your camera's sync speed is by looking in your user manual. For most cameras, it's one two hundredth of a second. You may have noticed that I keep saying, if you set your camera's shutter speed to sync speed or slower, that's because if you slow down your shutter speed, you can create magic. That's because you're actually controlling two exposures at the same time. You're controlling the ambient light exposure, that's anything, any light that's not coming from your flash. And you're also controlling the flash exposure, that's the light that is coming from your flash. Now, to help you understand this, we're going to do a little exercise. We're here in the parking lot of our studio. And it's not a very glamorous location, but it's a perfect location for this demonstration. Now, I'm keeping this simple by using just a single Profoto head and a softbox. And this is going to give a nice soft light on our model here. This is Megan. And I've already metered this, so I have my camera set to 1 250th of a second, which is my sync speed, and this is metered at f18. So I'm going to take two pictures, the first without a flash and the second with a flash. Look right this way, Megan. Look right at me. Gorgeous, just like that. Perfect. Let's take a look at that photo. 
Now this photo is absolutely black. That means at 250th of a second and f18, there's not enough ambient light to get a decent exposure. So now let's take another shot, this time with the flash on. There we go. Wow, look at that. In this shot, Megan is lit, but the background is still totally black. What that means is that the only light that the camera sees is the light that's coming from the flash. Now if we want more ambient light, what we'll need to do is slow down the shutter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a series of shots where I prog progressively slow down the shutter so you can see how dramatic this is. And that's key shifting, simply using your shutter to show more or less ambient light by either slowing down the shutter or speeding it up. Now if you don't have a fancy light meter and a pro photo set up with a softbox, you can still do this. You can just use an on-camera flash like a Nikon speed light or a Canon 550, 580, something like that. And actually the camera will do most of the work for you. Simply put your flash on your camera, set your camera to manual mode, and then set your aperture setting to something about 4.5 and your shutter speed to around 200th of a second. Then take a photo, slow down your shutter speed, take another photo, slow down your shutter speed again, and take another photo, and just keep going to see what happens. It's a lot of fun. Right, let's try it. That was a lot of fun. Thanks a lot, Megan. So remember, if you're in a low light situation, you can always increase your ISO setting. Doing that makes your sensor more sensitive to light, and so your shutter speeds don't have to be so long to get that ambient light in the picture. It's as simple as that. Now, if you have a question for digital photography one-on-one, -on -one, just send it in to studiolighting at gmail.com. I'll see you next time. This episode is brought to you by SnapFactory.com and StudioLighting.net. For more information about our workshops, visit SnapFactory.com.